If you don't know who I am, my name is Porter Snow, and I am glad that you're here with us today. We're about to get started, so sit up, engage, and let's do this. take a moment and say thank you so much to Healing Place Church for allowing us to use their beautiful facility and for partnering with us. They have an amazing staff and an amazing crew that have made this experience be wonderful. We absolutely could not have done it without you, and we are so, so, so grateful. Hey, everybody. This is Porter. I am glad that y'all are here with us. I know I'm glad to be here. I know that some of y'all are checking us out on the YouTube channel which is awesome, but I just want you to know that all of the questions and answers, the giveaways, the raffles, all that is gonna be on Facebook Live. So make sure you're checking that out and engaging. Send us your questions. We'd love to chat and just interact with you. I think that's it. Hey, let's get started. You know, I can't think of a more fitting time to talk about getting a handle of our emotions as this year, 2020. I mean, what a year it's been. Before I get started, I get too much into this. You know, we got to admit it hasn't been all bad. I can tell you that the mental health business and Zoom, they're just completely rocking it this year. Uh, one of the reasons I know that is I'm an online therapist with better help, and I personally have turned away about 300 clients since June. So we got to get this. This is an important part. What is the deal about stress and mental health? So the best way to do that is for you and I to take a trip backwards and go back to high school biology. That's where the answers are. I'm sure you remember it because it was just like yesterday for all of us. But there's four lobes in our brain. The one that you and I are going to talk about is the temporal lobe. That's where all the action is where, with our fear center. And with that small reaction that everybody's talking about, the stress response, the fight, the flight, or the freeze. See, when we get stress, 
there's something that's going on that's just completely automatic. What's happening is our mind is going on hyperdrive. Our mind is telling our body to get ready because we're in for something. We're in danger right now. Physiologically, what's happening is your heart is going nuts, your breathing rate is going up, and your muscles are getting tight because we've got to meet the challenge. But there's some other things that are going on that you've got to be aware of. Here's the deal. If this particular action, our reaction, goes on for a long period of time without breaks in the middle, what happens is that we actually develop these neural superhighways within the temporal lobe, meaning that they're feeding off of one another, and memories and feelings are coming out. And the only problem with that is, what happens eventually too, is that we lose that connection to the frontal lobe. Brothers and sisters, that's the place that we need. That's the frontal lobe. That's what's telling us how to respond to things logically and with rational thought. But there is something they didn't teach in high school. It's kind of like a small evolutionary gl glimpse at the system. Our brains can't really distinguish between imagined threats or, or real threats. So what's happening is you and I are having the same reaction just thinking about getting coronavirus as we are actually when we receive the diagnosis over the phone. There's another small glitch going on is that we have a really hard time figuring out when we're in physical danger and when we're in social danger. So you might be going, oh, that's why, meaning that when we, become, when we get criticized, our minds and bodies are having the same physiological reaction as we did if we were trying to get out of the way of an approaching car. A couple of really important things to know about. But I think the bottom line is this. When we really think about it, I think our dogs and cats, they're probably a lot happier than we are. <laughs> Definitely a lot more peaceful. Well, here's the million dollar question, right? Why did Jonathan ask me to talk to you about this? We, how do we get untethered to all this emotional unrest that's happening? Well, today's your lucky day. Because I thought of a, an acronym that's really simple to remember. And this is the way to get untethered get a handle of our feelings, and that is this. The acronym is I AM. As simple as that, I AM. So what does it stand for, right? It stands for identifying, accepting, and mitigating all those thoughts and feelings that are going around in our brains on a daily basis. Now, I've been hanging out with this community for about 25 years now, so I can almost hear you saying to me from, from your homes, now wait a minute, Deb, you're telling me the only thing I need to do to become more peaceful is to do these things I am? Well, do you, do you know me? I am an emotional mess. That's what you might be saying at home. So you know what? I accept the challenge and let's break it down. So here's the deal. We know that we have thousands and thousands of thoughts a day. The thing about them is, most of them are negative. Many of them are repetitive. And our brain is constantly scurrying about from our past to our future. Now we wonder why we're so stressed out. But come with me for a minute over to the past. This is you. This is a younger version of you. In our past, this is what's happening. We are actually figuring out through experiences with our families or with schools. We're trying to figure out who we are and how this world is. Is it a good place, a scary place? We're also trying to figure out where our place is in the world. And because I got to have the amazing journey to go around the country and listen to all of you tell me about the mental health challenges in this community, this is what I heard some of the perceptions are in our community, you know, as a result of having our bleeding disorder. For men in the community, I heard you loud and clear. You've let me know that you're so tired of people telling you what you can't do. You're so tired of self-limitations, our limitations placed on you. 
In fact, many of you told me this, that you'll do anything within your power to not let people know how much pain you're in, either physically or emotionally, because you don't want to be taken care of and you don't want to feel less of a man. For women, I've heard you too. You've let me know that from a very, very young age, you never really felt heard in the community, much less validated for, about, for what your experience is with a bleeding disorder. Maybe a lesser known thing too and that we've developed is for the milds and moderates. I have a unique opportunity to talk to you right now. And I've heard you say this too, that many times there's some, a degree of guilt or minimizing your feelings, maybe not feeling really comfortable talking about them at annual meetings. Because I think there is this culture within our community that says, severes, severes, you're entitled to problems and, and pain, but we're not. And lest we forget, we have got to acknowledge and re-acknowledge the generational trauma that's happened in our community by so many of our loved ones, brothers, blood brothers and sisters that were taken away from us, gone too soon from hep C and HIV. Brothers and sisters, whether we really acknowledge this or not, because I can tell you from a personal perspective, it's always in the back of my mind and my husband's as well. There is this baseline fear in our community that does create a lot of stress, a lot of emotional unrest, because we know even though we have amazing treatments, they're safe, they're effective, we know that something bad has happened in the past. It plants the seed. So these are some of the things that are in our past that have developed into beliefs or values that can really wreak havoc into us. So now we need to go to something else. There's, there's a book that says this. Many times when we develop some kind of assumptions when there's danger, they can fall into a couple of categories. Let's see which one resonates with you, right? Sometimes we develop an intolerance of uncertainty. This is that kind of person, you've seen them before, they just won't make a move until they're completely certain or they've gotten a lot of people's different points of view about what they should do. Perfectionism, learning that it's just not okay to make a mistake. The cousin of perfectionism has to do with this feeling of not being good enough. The imposter syndrome. If you really knew me, you would know I really don't have my stuff together. And then there's another one, and I see this in our community so much. We develop this mindset. Our way of controlling things is to be overly responsible for others, meaning that um, I'm in charge of your safety and even your happiness. So you can imagine this can get pretty, pretty stressful. Now, I know we're talking about some heavy stuff, and I'm supposed to be talking about how we can get untethered from this. But before we get there, let's go ahead and go to the future. Here's that other place. Here's that other place that has all kinds of strife and stress. And I can really sum it up in two words. Anticipatory stress. This is where the what-ifs live. This is where the fear of the unknown live. And they can also keep us in a constant state of unrest, of not knowing what to do, just stress in general. So at home, think for just a minute. How much time do you spend in the past or in the future as opposed to being in the present? Because, you know what, you might be saying at home, wait a minute, Jonathan promises a speech on how to get peaceful, right? And you're telling us all these different things. Because here's the idea. This stuff is stressing us out. Whether we're talking about it, whether we're running about it, running away from it, it's happening. And really, what's the solution? It's right here. It's right here in the present. This is where the magic happens. This is the only guaranteed space and time we have. And you know what? It's always been that way. What we have to do is plant our feet firmly in the present 
and create this space where we can actually think about our automatic thoughts that are popping up, those thoughts we developed a long time ago, and see if they still are important today, see if they even make sense today. Things like, do I still need to be perfect to be valued? Am I enough just how I am? Can I admit to being scared and still be a man or be a competent person? If people have seen me speak, they know that um, I always try to make something personal of it. And for me, it's just as healing as maybe you hearing the words. But for me, I had to get through a, two demons. Two demons in my past that always kept emotional unrest in me. And that is, I'm okay if other people are not okay with me. That's something I wrestled with for a long, long time kind of comes out of conditional love in a childhood, but that's another story. And also, I really feel, felt that I needed to do everything I could to make sure we turned down interpersonal tension because I just can't handle it. Now, you can imagine how much energy all of that takes, right? It takes me out of the present every moment. So what is this? So I've done my identifying, right? But what is this acceptance part of this? You just accept that's who you are and that's how you'll always be? Acceptance is so much different than that. Acceptance is this, realizing that you made those decisions about you and the way this world works when you were just a young person trying to make your way in a world that might have been dysfunctional or was definitely unpredictable, especially with a bleeding disorder. You have to go back in time and talk to that young person and say, thank you so much for helping me survive, for teaching me how to get by. But you know what? I got this now. I'm 57 years old. I can make new decisions about who I am and what I'm capable of. And I can make those decisions where they make more sense in my life now, but more importantly, that they are empowering and they're accepting, and most importantly, that they're self-compassionate. I can forgive my transgressions because there are reasons for them. But now I can make some new decisions, and that's what everybody can do right now. So what's this mitigating part of all of this unrest that we're talking about? This is where it gets tricky because our instinct is to do this. When we're sad, are anxious, are angry, our instinct is to avoid that pain, to go drink it away, to go busy ourselves away, to become self-important. And the thing about it is, that just keeps it going because it doesn't end. The only true way to get out of this anxiety cycle is to be willing to stay in that space of all those uncomfortable emotions. Being able to stay there, mitigate. It's a lot like metabolism. If you had too much to drink, I know this sounds strange, but it's a lot like that. After a while, the effects are going to go off. You can handle this. Allow the feelings to wash over within you. That's the way that you're able to stay in a space and you're able to take make new decisions and do new things that help you get out of these mindsets that we developed as kids when we were just trying to figure out how to survive. I believe in one of the components of Buddhism, and that really is that um, most of man's and woman's suffering, it comes from the resistance of pain. We ruminate about problems, we anticipate we're angry at having bleeding disorders. I completely understand that. But just allowing it to flow is a way to get personal freedom. So, one of the things you can do too, as silly as it sounds, is you can thank those old coping mechanisms that you've developed. For me, I get super defensive when I'm criticized. And I, I never liked that part of myself. As you can imagine, it caused a lot of problems. 
But once I was able to accept it and talk to it, thank you so much for helping me feel safe when I didn't feel safe. But I got this now. I can make a new decision. I don't have to be reactive. All of this is a really long way of saying this. Our true freedom lies in our ability to make decisions about who we are in the here and now. And so I would give anything in the world to be in the same room with you, with all of you right now. But, but since I can't, I would like to ask you this simple question. What are those beliefs that you have about yourself or about how the world works that are keeping you from your best life, that are keeping you from feeling happy and peaceful and competent to handle what, what comes next. So I hope that the next time I'm able to see you and, and get the hugs and be with you, we can, also really, we can all have such a candid discussion about this. Because here's the deal. I am enough, and we are definitely more than enough. I can't wait to see you, and thank you for listening. Hey, sit up in your chair or in your couch, wherever you are, and make sure you pay attention closely for the next few minutes. We've got some words from our sponsors. Check it out, and we'll see you back here in a minute. Which one is it gonna be, Anthony? The cartoon with the fish or the polar bears? We always watch those, Grandma. Because they're all good movies. So what's the good news? There's about eight million results. Is that all? Where do we start? How about this? Um, let me run through what the nurse talked about today and what we should expect when we go in tomorrow. And we can deal with all the pamphlets and these links tomorrow. Perfect. Anthony didn't seem nervous at all. He was so chill. That's great. I turned to him and said, I'm so proud of you. That's great. If this is hemophilia, the first thing I want to know is how the insurance works. Right, and that's with the social worker. But with the doctor, I don't want to forget to ask about treatment choices and factors. Factor? Right, factor. Um, the medicine we Googled last night. Come on, back. Hello, Amy, Hector. I know that while we've been waiting for the blood work to return, we've been operating under this assumption. And today, the blood work has confirmed it. Anthony has hemophilia A with factor eight level of less than 1%. That's considered severe. Correct. Now, this means you and Anthony will initially need to come in for treatment. You'll learn about- Insurance. What about factor? Correct. I'm sure you have many questions on many topics. We'll get through it all. We will educate you both, and in time, Anthony, on how and when to take his factor, how much to take, where it comes from, how it operates inside his body, and how it will help keep him healthy. It sounds like a lot, but Nurse Jess and I and the whole team here at the HTC will be here to guide you through. We treat around 100 patients just like Anthony and whose parents have been in your shoes before. You will become experts on this, I assure you. And sooner than you may think. <laughs> Step one, familiarize yourself with these pamphlets. We have your next appointment down for Thursday when we'll take step two together, okay? This is big. 
This is gonna be a big change. Is this real? Yeah, but we'll figure it out. Welcome to the Griffles plant, everyone. Right this way. Griffles is respected in the hemophilia community for our storied history of being problem solvers and innovators. We pride ourselves in identifying challenges within the community and working to solve them. Today is a great example of that commitment. We needed to teach community members about our plasma products, but the usual pamphlets and PowerPoints just aren't cutting it anymore. So we took some of our engineering prowess and put it towards a special experience crafted just for families like you. This is our new virtual reality experience. What if you could see where your factor comes from? We wanted to bring you, the community members, directly into our plasma process. We've offered free tour of the plant for years, bringing a handful of patients through whenever possible. But instead of bringing patients to the plant, a virtual reality tour now allows us to bring the plant to patients all over the country. How do I look? Uh, futuristic. <laughs> Thanks to the magic of virtual reality, we can take you through each step of the process, led by our in-house quality control expert, Dr. Jones. Are you ready to meet Dr. Jones? Absolutely. Welcome to Griffles. Hi, Dr. Jones. We require a pristine plant environment. From the plasma donation center to the plant, rigorous safeguards are in effect at every step in the process to help ensure our plasma products can be taken with confidence. In fact, five of our essential steps to safety take place at the point of plasma donation at our plasma donation centers. Now, are you ready for the tour? Deliveries of donated plasma arrive via refrigerated trucks, transported at negative 20 degrees Celsius or colder. It looks cold. We then thaw the plasma to begin the process of centrifugation. In the viral control center, the plasma is run through several processes to separate out the factor VIII protein. The protein is then run through ultrafiltration, concentrating it from around 120 kilos down to 40 kilos. After factor VIII purification, the factor VIII protein moves into its final stage of the process, what we refer to as aseptic filling. Aseptic filling refers to the process of putting a sterilized substance into a sterilized container, like a vial. The custom technology we use was invented right here at Griffles. We even use a special airflow system to help ensure the process is clean and safe before we lyophilize or freeze dry and vacuum seal the vials of what we now can call Factor. We believe this attention to detail in creating and bringing you Factor Eight treatment may mean you, your child, those you care about can get back to a more normal way of life. I'm sure you have plenty of questions. You should. <laughs> My advice is to write them out before your appointments at HCC. It's important to seek clarity and be your own advocate when it comes to your health care. Thank you. You've given us a lot to think about. Yeah. Very cool. But still processing it all. <laughs> Me too. It's a lot. In a good way. Yes, in a good way. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Thanks. He's asleep. He's asleep. Yes. Okay, honey, you have to recover. How are you feeling? Take a guess. So, what's question number one? Risks of plasma therapies? Factor. Factor. I keep saying plasma. And best practices. For long-term care. Mm -hmm. I think more than anything, I wonder what Anthony's life is gonna be like. In the next five years, or 10 years, or 30 years. Well, that's another good question for Dr. K. What's wrong? I can't. What do you mean? I can't go in. I can't do it. What's wrong? What's the point? What's the point of going in there? We can't fix this. Where is this coming from? We have a diagnosis, finally. Yeah, but there's no solution. At least not an easy one. I just feel so guilty. Hey, all parents face challenges. All of them. Remember the night we found out? You were the one that told me how to be strong for Anthony. Really? Yeah, don't you remember? What did I say? You said it was good to be honest about your feelings, good or bad, but to be strong. And then you made me start reading everything, every pamphlet, every Google search result. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Do your homework and ask a lot, a lot of questions. questions. Yeah, I get it though. It all feels very real right now. Like as soon as we go in and start planning with Dr. K, it all becomes official. Exactly. And it's the start of a long journey. I just really want to get this right, you know? I want to get it right for Anthony. You want some advice? Maybe. It's good to be honest about your feelings. Good or bad. But be strong. I came up with that. You just do your homework. <laughs> and ask a lot of questions. Whoever came up with that is very smart. And a good parent. The best. Right? Now, how have the last few days been? Well, in all honesty, I felt panicked. There's so much to read and so much to know. Yes, things can be very overwhelming early on. But the more I learn about this, the better I feel. I just want my athlete to be able to lead a comfortable life. Amy, nowadays, with the products that are available to treat them, Because allergies shouldn't get in the way of a good time. Because a heart attack should never stop the heart of a family. Because hemophilia shouldn't keep someone from doing what's in their blood. At Bayer, everything we do, from advances in health to innovations in agriculture, is to help every life we touch. At Bayer, this is why we science. My name is Nikita, and I'm from Tennessee, and I have the pleasure of serving patients in Arkansas, Louisiana, and Tennessee, supporting the Southeast region. A Santa Fe Genzyme Corps manager is a person that has the opportunity to go out into the community. We partner with the local chapters, we provide education, but most importantly, we have the pleasure of listening to the community. It is my role to be that resource to you and your family on all aspects of our company. When my children were diagnosed with hemophilia, the community was right there for me to let me know that I was gonna make it through. And this is my way of saying thank you, being that resource to the next family that comes along. Hey everybody, just interrupting real quick here. Um, 
make sure you go to the website, click on the sponsor links. We've got some great information there, but also you can win uh, some door prizes. So make sure you're getting over there. See y'all in a bit. Bye. Hi, we're CVS Specialty, and you've come to the right place for specialty medication and one-on-one support. We want to help make living with your specialty condition a little easier. Let's start with getting your medication. Most specialty pharmacies only offer delivery, but with us, you have options. We can provide convenient, contactless home delivery of your medication. But if you prefer to pick it up, we can have it available for you at any CVS pharmacy location. The choice is yours. We also know that taking a specialty medication, particularly if you're new to treatment, can come with questions. So we make sure you have access to a nurse and pharmacist specially trained in conditions like yours. Together, they're known as your CVS specialty care team, and you can rely on them for trusted information. Send your care team a secure message on our website or mobile app. They can help with questions about your medication order status, billing, or even side effects. For even more convenience, use our digital tools to manage your medication. You can refill prescriptions, monitor order status, make payments, and much more anytime online. These are just some of the ways we can help you manage your specialty condition. We're CBS Specialty, and we'll be here when you need us, because you are our specialty. For more than 50 years, scientists have been investigating and evolving gene therapy, an approach that aims to address a genetic disease, such as hemophilia, at its source, the gene. Genetic diseases can be caused by gene mutations, meaning the body does not have the instructions it needs to create the right proteins. Research is exploring whether a new functional gene can be delivered into a cell to provide instructions to make a desired protein, such as factor 8 or 9 in the case of hemophilia. Together, let's explore the science behind this investigational approach with our 3D vector model. In gene therapy research, we need a way to get the functional gene into the body. A transporter, called a vector, is used. Vectors are made from modified viruses. You may associate viruses with things that make you sick, but the most commonly used virus for hemophilia gene therapy research, the adeno-associated virus, or AAV, was chosen because it is not known to cause human disease. A virus is transformed into a vector by removing the viral genetic information. Now the modified viral-based shell can serve as a delivery vehicle. In a laboratory, the new functional gene is created. It contains the instructions for the cell to make a necessary protein, such as factor 8 or 9. Once created, the new functional gene is placed inside the shell. Together, they become a vector. In hemophilia gene therapy research, the vector is delivered to the body by IV infusion into the blood. The goal is to deliver the new functional gene to the liver cells called hepatocytes. Each viral vector has its own attraction, or tropism, to a certain cell type. In hemophilia, for example, AAV is attracted to the liver's cells. Once the vector reaches the liver, the new functional gene can enter a cell's nucleus, or command center, where it sits next to the existing DNA. If transferred successfully, the new gene instructs the liver cells to make the necessary protein. In the case of hemophilia, the gene enables the production of clotting proteins. Safety and efficacy have not been established. Studies of investigational gene therapy are ongoing, and participants continue to be followed. To learn more about gene therapy research for hemophilia, visit hemophiliaforward.com or talk with your healthcare team. Hi, I'm Samuel, and I'm from Long Beach, California. Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. Hi, my name is Leo Tellez, and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hi, I'm Kalechi Arunga, and I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland. Hi, I'm Ed, and I'm from Grafton, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Vene, and I'm from Orlando, Florida. Howdy folks, it's Paul from Austin, Texas. 
Hi, I'm Ellen and I'm from Conshohocken, Pennsylvania. Hey, I'm Michael from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, I'm Brian from Orlando, Florida. Hi, I'm Miles and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, my name is Lenore and I'm from Mawa, New Jersey. Hi, I'm Craig Watkins in Kansas City. Hi, I'm Nora and I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Mike and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, my name is Orson and I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Patrick and I'm from Libertyville, Illinois. Hi, I'm Karen and I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Jeremy from Denton, Texas. Hello, my name is Stephen Lawrence. I take care of patients in Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. Hi, my name is Robin Lawrence, and I take care of patients in Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. Hi, my name is Debbie Costales. I'm in New Mexico and El Paso. I'm Ed. I'm a nurse that's worked with hemophilia patients for over 24 years. I cover Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa, and the rest of the Midwest. Hi, my name is Cheryl Ashmore. I live in Castine, Maine. My territory covers all six states in New England. I love working with families, especially kids and teens, to teach transition tools for hemophilia life skills, as well as tips and tricks for how to successfully stick to infusions. Hi, I'm Vanessa, and I service patients in Missouri, Kansas, and Nebraska. Go Chiefs! Hi, I'm Karen Price from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm a specialty infusion nurse helping patients in Missouri and Illinois. Hi, I'm Judy Bogato. I'm a former treatment center nurse, and I now work with Superior Biologics as an infusion nurse. Hi, I'm Craig McDonald from Colorado. I've been covering the Midwest for about 20 years in the bleeding disorder community. Hi, my name is Abdiel Ramirez, and I work for Superior Biologics here in the state of Texas. If you only know how to speak Spanish, I'm also here to help. I'm Phil Fitzpatrick, an infusion nurse with Superior Biologics. Kedrian Biopharma produces and distributes plasma-derived products to treat rare diseases such as hemophilia and primary immunodeficiencies. Plasma comes from people, donors, who contribute their precious gift so others, people they most often never know, can live better lives. We act as a bridge between donors and patients by turning plasma into life-saving therapies to serve patients all over the world. Cadrian is headquartered in Italy with subsidiaries in Europe, the US, Latin America, and Asia. We own manufacturing plants in Italy, Hungary, and the US, and through Ked Plasma, we operate state-of-the-art plasma collection centers in the United States and Hungary. Kedrin is the world's fifth player and Italy's first in the field of plasma-derived products. In Italy, we partner the national health system in its self-sufficiency program. At a global level, we distribute in approximately 100 countries and we are market leaders for specialty treatments, including those used to prevent RH sensitization. Kedrian started as a small family company, strongly connected to the communities where its people live and work. For us, social responsibility has always been a matter of being a good neighbor. Over the years, while expanding worldwide, we have maintained our role of bridging communities from the local to the global level.
innovation means contributing to improve the quality of life of people affected by rare diseases. Every day, we cooperate with patient and donor organizations, supporting projects that make a difference. We invest in scientific research and disease awareness. We work to broaden access to plasma therapies globally. Every day, we strive to keep life flowing. Because allergies shouldn't get in the way of a good time. Because a heart attack should never stop the heart of a family. Because hemophilia shouldn't keep someone from doing what's in their blood. At Bayer, everything we do, from advances in health to innovations in agriculture, is to help every life we touch. At Bayer, this is why we science. Hi, my name is Porter Snow and I'm the Chief Operations Officer for Hope Charities. Myself, along with the Hope Charities team, would like to give a big thank you to all of our event sponsors. Genentech, Octopharma, Novo Nordisk, Medexis, ARJ, Bayer, Biomarin, Brothers, Cottrell's, CSL Bearing, CVS Specialty, Ethical Factor, Evolutionary RX, Family Factor, Fidelis, First Choice, Griffles, HPC, Kedrion, Matrix, Pfizer, Rare Patient Voice, Sanofi, Spark Therapeutics, Superior Biologics, and Takeda. And we would also like to give an extra special thank you to our advocate sponsors. These are our sponsors who day in and day out year after year have committed on an annual basis to support our organization and to help those in need. Those sponsors are ASAP, DrugCo, InfuCare RX, InTouch, Paragon, and Specialty Therapeutic Care. We appreciate it and thank you for participating and sponsoring the Hope Conference 2020. Hey, thank you all so much for being with us this weekend. We really do wish that we were all in the same room, but truly, even though we can't be together physically, we do feel like that we have been with you in heart. We thank you so much for spending time with us and being a part of the Hope family. We really do see you, each and every one of you, as just an extension of our family as we connect in moments like these. And we really are better together. That's not just a saying for us. I think we really feel that and we mean that. And I asked my wife Carla to join me tonight just to be able to share some of her thoughts and to uh, encourage you just from her, her uh, point of view with, with hope as well. Because for us, this is not just a me thing. It's not just a you thing. It's a family thing. And so... Carlo, you have any thoughts you'd like to share with people tonight? Yeah, we just wanted to say how much we love everybody and how much we miss everyone. I know it's been a difficult time for everyone not being able to be together, and we're huggers. We want to just hold on to you when you're hurting, and and it's which is what we need also when we're hurting as well. And we we just wanted to say we miss you. We can't wait until we get to be with you again, and we just are grateful that we have this opportunity to to connect even though it's not in person i know it's not the same but we believe that soon it will be the same and even better than it had been before yeah sometimes you don't even know what you have until it's been taken away right and i think that's true for all of us whether it's that you're dealing with pain or there's dealing with family issues and different things that go on in our lives but i think this year has made me feel even more endeared to our times and our moments Absolutely. together 
and uh, I'm looking so forward to when we can be together again. But even in, even in opportunities like this, even though it's been virtual and it's been so different, we want you to know that we're preparing some great things for you next year. We're preparing to be together again. This is not the end. This is just a step on a long journey that we get to be on together. I've often said, and, and I know you've heard me say this before, is that one of the best things about being diagnosed with a rare disease or a bleeding disorder, in my case, is the family that comes along with it. And we're here to be able to connect with you, not just in moments where we're all gathered in one big event, but we're also here to connect with you on the day-to-day -day level as well. Many people don't know this, but Carla used to actually run things in the office and she used to receive a lot of the calls. And I've often said that, uh, you know, I help bring some of the structure to the organization, but Carla really was the heart. And that's still true, even though she doesn't work with us every day anymore, she's just still part of the heart and the vision for that. And uh, there's so many people out there that are in need and that need our help in our community, and we just need each other. And so practical daily things that we can do to serve one another is really what we're here to do as an organization. And we hope that we can do that as a team and as a group. Yeah, please, please, please remember, you are not alone. That is not just a saying that we say. It's something that comes from life experience ourselves. And we, we just want you to remember that. We've had to remember that ourselves. Even our team has not been together all of the time as social distancing has been a necessity. We just want you to remember you are not alone. We're here if you need us. We're here when you need us. And not even, we're, we're here preemptively. We're, we're here to be a part of your family to be your friends and let's continue to build a relationship with each other even if we have to do it through FaceTime or we do it through Zoom or we do it through Hope Groups. We just want to continue to build together and love each other and, and don't feel like we have to walk through this alone. You know, even in our experiences this weekend, we felt like we've been able to connect with each other a lot better. And uh, once again, I just want to say thank you so much for carving out time. You know, one of the highest value commodities that any of us have in this life is time. And the truth is, is that you have invested time with us this weekend, and we don't take that lightly. And we want to say thank you. We also want to say a big thank you to all of our sponsors. There's so many people behind the scenes that helped us do this. Our amazing staff who helped put this incredible event together. All of the hundreds of volunteers that have been behind us through the years to help thrust us forward into all the things that we've done. We could not do it without you. We're so grateful for each and every one of you. So many people are coming together, even in hope groups on a regular basis, and every single one of you matter and they ma and you matter to us and we're so grateful that you spent this weekend with us so thank you so much for investing your time your energy with us this weekend and we cannot wait to be back together when it's appropriate and when the time is right and we certainly hope that you really have felt inspired lifted up and built up this weekend as we've been together we love you and we can't wait to be with you again thank you all these in a Scottish accent? Yes, no, too wordy. Hey, make sure you come back around lunchtime and we'll have some more fun. Maybe knock back a few. No. <laughs> Want to have a good lunch together, so make sure you get your point and come back. Every time I do it, it's going to get worse. I am getting tired. Oh my gosh, hold on. I was about to do a church announcement. <laughs> Hey! I forgot, yes. I want to say a big, huge thank you to all of our sponsors. Okay, wait, that wasn't a good one. I'm sorry. Hey! Nope. <laughs> Susie, leave the room. <laughs> Boo! No, and I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad I'm here, and this is not working. Oh. Top of the morning to you. Are you gonna actually do this in Scottish, Jonathan? 
That was Jerry the Plumber. Hey, everybody! Peace out.